Visit AwakeningMusicBooks.com for avant-garde artists, eclectic world music, consciousness raising radio and blogs, self-help healing and wellness services. That's AwakeningMusicBooks.com. At Mayo Clinic in Florida, we're predicting the unpredictable. Using 3D printed life-size organ models to map out complex surgeries ahead of time. Learn more at MayoClinic.org slash possible. Mayo Clinic. You know where to go. I'm Elizabeth Joseph, your guest host today, sitting in for Kenyatta Turner with my co-host, Stephanie Stanley with Pharmacists for Humanity. Hey, Miss Elizabeth. What? Nice oh, to see you there. Nice to see okay. y'all, queens. <laughs> our topic today is how to care for our mental and emotional well-being mm-hmm. with our very special guest, Ia Afo founder of Heal Historical Trauma here in Phoenix area. Yes. She earned Western Certificate as a trauma specialist and is a descendant of a long line of traditional healers from Benin Republic, West Africa. Wow. Mm. She dressed like it, too. Let me just say. (laughs) We'll be discussing various aspects of our mental and emotional well-being that can negatively affect our overall health and ability, our ability to cope with life's many challenges, especially during the pandemic that all of us have been going through. So, Ia. Let's get going. Mm -hmm. Let's get going. You do look amazing. I'm so sorry for our listeners. I can't see how fabulous you look. Facebook is on. I can see a little bit of it. Better tune in. Yeah, so give us a brief on the uh, work that you do relating to our topic and really why we should listen to you. Uh, You know, this has been really a lifelong journey for me in terms of mental and emotional wellness. Um. I struggled myself with depression and probably as long, as far back as I can remember, really. And so throughout my lifetime, chasing different things that had to do with um, more Western medicine, not finding, um, you know, the tools that Mm -hmm. were really available to help me. And it was really through traditional African medicine Mm -hmm. and spending time Um, with our medicine people on the continent that I really started to become well and have a better understanding. And so I ultimately had to, you know, sis, I had to combine Mm. what I learned on the continent with the medicine men and neurology. Those are the two keys to me. And okay. so um, my education is very strongly in stress science and trauma science and neurology. I'm currently completing uh, one of Dr. Bruce Perry's um, trainings um, in the neurosequential model for caregivers that's based on Dr. Bruce Perry's work. Um, so that's my background. Um, I teach at the Arizona Trauma Institute. Um, okay. I'm certified as a trauma specialist. Oof. I have different um, trust-based relational intervention um, facilitator. I have specialized in adverse childhood experiences. I train on that. I teach that. Um, I'm a historical trauma specialist. So trauma, trauma, trauma <laughs> is stress and trauma so is my world. So why we should listen yes. to you is because it sounds like you're a little qualified. Yeah, maybe a little, yeah, kind of expert they, category. Yeah, just coming just out the ear on both sides, mm. which and I love. That's the part that's important that to me. That part. You know, I think that we have been, and I will say it, that we have been failing people in mental health and behavioral health in this Ooh. country and truly – almost all around the world we Mm -hmm. fail people we are failing and we have to look at um, mental health and emotional health from a different perspective in order to really serve people oh yes i love it Mm, especially during these times yeah yeah Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's definitely tough for every i I want to know why why is why is mental health important Mm -hmm. you know i think that uh, let me take a step back because Mm -hmm. i think that when we talk about health and wellness Mm -hmm. we like to separate it Mm. into categories and we say physical health and mental health emotional health Mm -hmm. from an indigenous perspective health is really about balancing yes all the different areas of your life right so we think that we understand holistic behavior and or we think we understand um, holistic health And so we talk about, oh, yes, mind, body, spirit, and this is holistic. No, no, no. (laughs) Wellness, wellness is, yes, wellness is 
your physical body, mm -hmm. your psychological yeah. state, your emotional state, yes. your um, how you relate in your community, mm -hmm. how your family relationships are. Mm -hmm. Do you are do you have economic harmony? Come on, wow. Um, we have many different facets. What is your, how are you doing spiritually? And Not those to say are that, all related and to each all, other. They're, it's, right? all, it's all one. Yes. We cannot have, because it, the wellness is a balance of all of those things. Mm -hmm. It's we're always trying to seek mm -hmm. that balance. Mm -hmm. It is not a destination. Mm -hmm. It is not something that we will eventually achieve. Wow. Just like the world is dynamic, yeah. our wellness will always be dynamic. It yeah. is not a static. Mm. That's um, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I yeah, I definitely want to hear so much more about that. It's mm -hmm. definitely a topic that's really close to my heart. Right. Um we will actually be right back. Uh, with today's main topic after these very important messages. Okay. <laughs> right back, um, y'all. Yeah, we're definitely going to continue talking about really just the importance of mental health yes. and trauma. And I would definitely want to hear more about how it really affects other aspects of health yes. and how those are related. I mean, you've been touched Good. on like Real. economics. Mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. And then she said, wellness is balance. To mm. me, that was huge. Woo! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never heard it like that before. Right? Balance. <laughs> Balance yeah. is everything. It is. It is. So. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll be right back. So before the break, we were talking about mm -hmm. kind of why it's important. Um, yeah. And you mentioned all kinds of stuff yeah. about mm -hmm. economics. Yeah. <laughs> and wellness right. is balance. And you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because all of those pieces come together to help us have overall wellness. So when we lose um, something in one of those areas, it shifts that balance and we fall out of wellness. And so we can see that in a number of ways. And so we're always looking to continue that level of balance, that equilibrium, mm -hmm. so that we can have overall wellness. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, um, in addition to all of that, yes, yes, <laughs> so yes, yes. Just to continue where we are. So um, now, given the current uh, growing concerns of our uh, physical health, mm -hmm. uh, even COVID nineteen, yes, uh, we went. You know, why is uh, mental and emotional health right up there with it? I think you've addressed that, but okay. some people again try to separate it, but mm. it's right up there with it. The unseen so, so part let, of it. Let's let's break that down. You okay. know, we okay. have throughout the pandemic, we see numbers um, for severity and deaths that are very high, right, right. in African-American communities and in often in Native American communities. Mm. And so the first assumption is, oh, something's wrong with them. Oh, mm. they're not hygienic. Mm. They don't know how to this. They don't know how to do that. Wow. But when we look at the overall picture of wellness, it makes sense because People are susceptible to COVID-19 when we have comorbidities, right? right? We know that if you have so asthma, conditions. if you have diabetes, if you have general, any right. of those conditions, yeah. you're more susceptible to having COVID-19. Right. What we also know is that all of those conditions are driven by stress. Mm. Yes. So Ooh, yes. in communities Deep. where people go through um, adversity on a regular basis, where they have adversity in their history, mm. they are going to automatically have higher levels most of the time of cortisol in their system. And so cortisol is one of the stress hormones. And when we have high levels of cortisol, we then have we're much more likely to All have time, right? asthma, mm -hmm. cancer, diabetes, obesity, all of those things come into play. Mm -hmm. So now that we have COVID-19, and this is another layer mm -hmm. of health concern yeah. on top of it, we really know that we've got to be able to control what's going on with our biochemistry mm -hmm. in order to lower those levels of stress hormone in order to not have some of those conditions manifest. Right. As well as um, if we want to feel well mm -hmm. and we want to be emotionally well, 
it's going to be a lot about the neurobiology. Mm. What are the neuromodulators in our brains doing? Mm. Do we have enough dopamine mm -hmm. so that we have okay. that feel good, okay. so that we have the motivation to do certain things? Mm -hmm. Do we have enough serotonin mm -hmm. so we feel full and we feel satisfied mm -hmm. with, with life? All of this has to do with... Um, our emotional expression, our psychological, the at you know the that part of our psychological wellness. Yeah, mm -hmm. it all we like to believe, and I mean this for some people it sounds difficult or it sounds harsh, but I'm going to say it because say in it. another way it gives you control, sure. right? The if you're happy or if you're sad, if you're motivated, if you're full, if you're angry, if mm -hmm. you're aggressive, mm -hmm. all of that is controlled by your neuromodulators. All of that is controlled by neuromodulators. Crazy. So you could have, you know, feel like, oh, I'm so depressed and I'm so upset and I don't know why and mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on in my life. And we move into all of these emotions. Mm -hmm. But if we do something that helps to raise up our dopamine, give us more dopamine, if we do something that helps us to have some more serotonin, mm -hmm. suddenly what seems so bleak and so horrible and so terrible is gonna look different. Yeah. Because the neuromodulators impact how we're feeling all the time. Wow. So for me, people are, you know, because, you know, sometimes we like to be dramatic, right? Like we wanna have <laughs> drama. Just a little bit, just a little have, bit. You know, all of these things. <laughs> and then, you know, when you break it on down to the science and you look at the mm -hmm. neurology, you go, huh, so are the emotions real or are they not real? <laughs> or, you know what I mean? If I, you, you know what I mean? Right, right, I love that. I mean, and so, but it gives you power because sure. then you yes. can say, okay, I'm gonna need to go ahead and do some meditation. I'm sure. gonna need to have some a gratitude practice. Sure. And what we know is when we combine a practice of gratitude mm -hmm. with quieting of the mind for three to four to five minutes every day, wow. we have release of serotonin, we have release of oxytocin. Mm -hmm. All of these things that make us feel good. Mm. I used to feel like, you know, I told before the show was on, <laughs> I, <laughs> before they press play. Okay. Uh, no, I, you know, I talked about feeling anti about a lot of things mm. that, you know, is in popular. You know, when this gets popular, I'm it's going, trendy, yeah, yeah, right. Ah, uh, no, you, you know, no I more. don't trust it. Yeah. Sure. And so this gratitude, not that I didn't feel grateful, but everybody pushing this gratitude, uh -huh. um, I was poo pooing it a little bit. Yes, <laughs> and and definitely resisting. Mm -hmm. But there's scientific research I that it. it impacts your neurology when you combine having a gratitude practice, meaning just spending some few minutes every day or just going throughout your day saying, I'm grateful mm -hmm. for, for this, whatever. I'm grateful for, and if mm -hmm. it's on the real bad days, sometimes yeah. you say, whoo, I'm grateful to be breathing today. <laughs> you know, like, right. I'm, I'm taking grateful for breath, the shirt. You know, yes. I, might, I got my shirt on. I'm feeling real, real good present. about that. Yeah. You know, the air conditioning, <laughs> where, you sure. know, you have those kinds of things, but gratitude it and will help. It will help to release those neuromodulators so that you're mm -hmm. then in control of your emotion mm -hmm. and it can lift lift your mood and that. impact. Get impact out of the stuckness wellness. of the emotion. I like yes. anything that yeah. is gonna give people the power because yes. we feel I feel like powerless in a lot of ways, especially mm -hmm. right. if like all you're looking at is the news and it's just right. like, oh, this, you know, it's just like, oh, mm -hmm. this is not how I want to start my day. Mm -hmm. So right. I like anything that's like, you know what? I have the power to change my day, to you change do. my yes. perspective. I you love do. that. Yes. yes. Empowerment, self-empowerment. Yes, you, ab you absolutely do. Yeah. You absolutely do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any more questions for oh, me, Oh, yes. Stephanie? I have so many questions. Quick <laughs> one, two, three. Okay. Um, so, okay. So uh, how do you see this playing out? in the long run if we do not take immediate, and I mean immediate mm. actions to stabilize our mental and emotional well-beingness? You know, we'll continue, you know, the uh, people will continue to be sick, right? Mm, and even okay, if it's true. not COVID, yeah, you know, um, we talk a lot about COVID and we think every time it's gonna be COVID that we get sick from, but when the immune system is depleted, there's still the flu, it's, yep. there's still cancer, there's, other, right. there's so still true. so many other things. It doesn't matter what it is. So yeah, I definitely wanna hear more about that. Let's go to our Kitchen Corner segment with Danielle. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hello and welcome to The Kitchen Corner. I'm your host, Danielle Del Castillo, and I'm here to share some wisdom about building health starting in the kitchen. If you're looking for a way to get more veggies into your meal this fall, this delicious warm Brussels sprout slaw is an absolutely delicious way to do that. The thing about Brussels sprouts is they have to be done right to highlight their deliciousness. Brussels sprouts are high in fiber, antioxidants, vitamin C, and vitamin K. They also help reduce inflammation in our bodies, regulate blood sugar, and help our bodies detoxify. For this recipe, you will need pecans, Brussels sprouts, coconut oil, two medium shallots, and for the sauce, you will need Dijon mustard, apple cider vinegar, lemon juice, and maple syrup. The mix of sweet and tangy makes all the difference. So first, roast half a cup of pecans in a 350 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Next, finely chop your one and a half pounds of Brussels sprouts and shallots and make your sauce by combining one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, three tablespoons of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of maple syrup in a bowl. Next, heat a large cast iron or metal skillet to medium heat and add one tablespoon of avocado or coconut oil. Add your Brussels sprouts and chopped shallots and saute for three to four minutes, and then add the sauce and pecans and cook for three to four more minutes, stirring occasionally. Serve warm or reheat within the next two days. I hope you enjoy this delicious warm Brussels sprout slaw, and I look forward to sharing more recipes with you next week on The Kitchen Corner. Mm -hmm. So tell me, where where did we leave off before? We were talking about, well, we were talking about something with intimacy when we had uh, someone interject we here. Did. <laughs> and, and I, I have and a I question will, related yeah, to that. Oh, go ahead. Go. So, so dopamine. Yeah. Break down the dopamine <laughs> again and the oxytocin <laughs> and that good feeling <laughs> stuff and yeah. how else we can get more of that. Yes. <laughs> well, when there's two people, right? <laughs> we had somebody asked, but yes, you have a, a, a good, you have two and a half times more dopamine release after you are experiencing intimacy with someone. So, really? yes, that's another way to that's have amazing. dopamine. Yes. What about hugs? I like <laughs> hugs. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hugs, yeah. Hugs are a good way. Hugs is oxytocin, right? Uh, yeah. Or hugs it's are, all of it. Yeah, hugs are strong oxytocin because mm -hmm. it's that relational piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. Yes, yeah, Stephanie, okay. do you have any more questions for us? Um, yes, kind of related to that, but kind of back on the uh, okay. other side of our uh, topic. But um, So there's a term called uh, social health, right? Yes. Uh, that's a bit of what we talked about, but in another way. Um, how are these current lockdowns, hmm. um, so yes, the vaccine and all that, social distancing, um, et cetera, is working its way into our collective psyche? I mean, you've mentioned some of the ways that would help with that, but on that yes. note... If you can address yes, that. you know, Thank so you. it's so funny. I, I love these terms that we come up with mm -hmm. um, and feel like we've discovered something. Right? You know? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> like this is something new that it's important to look at how you interact with people and your relationships with people. Sure. From an indigenous perspective, this mm -hmm. is a part of our overall wellness. So this is not a Period. special other thing. Mm -hmm. This is not something else we're doing. This is a part of our overall wellness. Mm -hmm. And we have to change our mindset in a lot of ways. Um, in some of the work that I do, I traditionally am working face to face with people on the one of the Native American communities. And we do a lot of, you know, face to face work, and I'm in the home with them and so forth, oh, right. Wow. And so okay. now we have COVID-19. And I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so we oh. have to and this is my other favorite word that everyone is using pivot. <laughs> I used to want to choke people about that word for a long time, but now I'm using it, pivot. Okay. Um, and so we become flexible and malleable, and we just have to change the way we do things, right? Sure. So maybe I can't be face-to-face -face with you and doing these things with you, but maybe when I call grandma, and I think because I work with a lot of grandmas, maybe when oh. I'm calling a grandma on the phone and I say, Grandma, what type of adversity did you go through when you mm. were growing up? Grandma's going to remember. She lived on the community as a young person, perhaps, growing up, and there was a lot of adversity. And then Grandma says, oh, we used to go out in the yard and we would sing. Oh. And then we would, we would have a fire and we would, you know, um, cook our food mm. outside and we'd sit around the fire and we would do talking circle. And so engaging grandma in that way is building our social connection and building our relationship in a whole nother way. Yeah. And so we just have to be 
creative mm-hmm. about how we do our relationships and we have to be willing to pivot and do things differently, but we can still have these relationships, right? And so now when I've said to grandma, grandma, what did you do to back in the day to um, overcome adversity? And she gives me these ideas, right? Now I'm saying to her, that's wonderful. Have you taken the kids outside Mm. and done that today? Sure. And maybe grandma didn't think to do that. Well, now I've connected grandma back to her traditional Mm. ways of being, which is another way that we work through trauma, which is another way that we regulate the neuromodulators, reconnecting people to their traditional ways of being and to their culture is another way that we are healing trauma. So we've, we've done you know, 10 things in that one interaction because we were able to pivot. That's Mm. amazing. So it's not so much that just because we can't be in each other's presence and that we can't see each other and be around each other all the time, that does not mean that we have to let this, what they're calling social health, Mm. um, (laughs) go down. You know, we we just shift in how we do things. Yeah. As indigenous people, right, when we have an, it's no different than when we have an ancestor die, we have somebody die, they're never really gone. Mm. It, the, the relationship between us and that family member just transforms. Mm. They're still there. We still put a plate in front of them. When we eat at the table, we still have things to revere them. So we just shift in how those relationships transform and we meet that challenge. We can't think that we always get to be the way it was and that we always need to have comfort in order, uh, have things be comfortable Mm. in order Mm. for us to relate in a way that is meaningful for us psychologically and emotionally. Okay. Mm. It's not always going to be comfortable right we have to learn we have to yes growth is uncomfortable Mm -hmm. exactly adversity as long as we can control it as long as it's not prolonged as long it's a as it's a little bit predictable is fundamentally healthy for Mm -hmm. us and for our development sure Sure. Sure. yeah sure you know so um i think we just get creative and we can keep those things intact we have to make that effort Sometimes we get so set in our ways and we get so comfortable that we don't want to make the effort to do something a little bit different. Yeah. Make the effort and Mm. and it'll be there. It'll be there. Mm. What are, what are some things that we can do? Like what are some little things that I can do at home to help me process past traumas? Like, like give me some examples. Um, One of the things you want to do is, have a predictable routine in the home because when things are you know predictable Mm. you're able to get out of that fight or flight response Mm. right i want to shift the way you think about trauma for just a minute and ask you to look at it from a little bit of a different perspective we look at trauma often as it always stays in our body and it's always with us and we can never get rid of it right but when we look at it in that way we um, don't credit the human form and the human spirit with resilience that's the word there you go yes And, and and resilience we throw the word around a lot but what resilience means is that we can dem- demonstrate in the face of adversity yeah. that we can be disrupted and that we can then go back to homeostasis. And that's overcome, what, it, right. yes, Come and on. that's very simply, that's what it means, wow. that we can go back to homeostasis. We encounter adversity, we're able to get back to that place of balance. Right. That's resilience. If you create an environment for yourself that does not cause you to be in fight or flight mode, mm-hmm. you will more readily be able to accomplish your equilibrium, your homeostasis, right? If you already are a person that has trauma in your life mm. and you every morning get up and you don't have your clothes ready, you don't know what mm. you're going to wear, your right. stuff Ooh. is dirty, it's all over the house, <laughs> and then you're running around sure. to, to, to gather yourself, which is typical of people who've had trauma, FYI, wow. right, to, to, to be disorganized like that. Are you that. talking about me? Come on. I'm not talking about you, girl. <laughs> no, talking but, about you know, me. <laughs> <laughs> right? But if we then have that environment, you stay in fight or flight mode. So, yes, the trauma is staying with you yeah. because your threshold 
is uh, you have a smaller threshold because you have the history of trauma. So all of those little things that you can do to regulate your environment, to have ritual, to have procedure within your environment are going to help you get out of fight or flight mode and experience that resilience that everyone is talking about. So we can have routines in the home. We do things that are, you know, throughout the day, Mm -hmm. breathing. Yeah. Mm. There are different types of breath, and I used to poo poo mm. breathing. Not that I'm saying that <laughs> breathing is <laughs> good, really? but I'm just saying, well, because, you know, she when everyone's going, everything that's trendy. Trendy. No, breathe, go breathe. You know what I'm she saying? Don't like, like the get trend. off me, man. You know, like, I, I mean, you know, you don't tell the Hulk to go breathe. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Hulk is probably not breathing, but there are certain types of breaths that you sure. can are take helpful. that are going to right. impact your neurology right. and help you lower those stress hormones in your system yes Mm. yes 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 um and i i want to demonstrate one and i want to do one on the air because i think that it's very very it's a powerful breath not one that i poo poo at all perfect (laughs) and you you (laughs) take in two breaths through your nose so the first one then go up to the top of the nose go again and then breathe out out your mouth Yes. Okay. In through the nose, again to the top, out through the mouth. Okay, and listeners, don't fall asleep. Right. Because that was really <laughs> relaxing. But it does. Does it not yeah. get you right away? Does yeah. it not I like it. set you right yeah. away? Oxygenating the brain. I like that a lot. And, and, it, pulsing. and there's a, a neurological response. Perfect way. Yes. Perfect way to transition. Oh, we will great. actually wow. be right back after these important messages. Yeah. So uh, did you have another question for us, Stephanie? He has been so amazing. That breath was fantastic. I felt it. I hope y'all listeners (laughs) did it with us because (laughs) that was a good one. Yes, and it was quick and easy to do. (laughs) It was. Yeah, it was great. And it brings you down quick. Yeah. Yeah, I I feel like it it really brings you down quick. You know what? I like that it was easy, too, because there's some, and I'm not saying they don't work, but it's a lot to remember, and you know if you're having an anxiety attack. Right. right. That's the thing, that's right? right. Or if you're already escalated, like me, you know, I'm that's real. Right. I'm real good at the Hulk. You know oh what my I mean? Like you got to bring oh, you me down. Oh, you were mentioning it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go down quick. Like yeah. you can't be asking me to pet the cat or something because I'm not. You know, <laughs> not when I'm escalated. But right. I'm sorry. Please that's ask no, the no, question. No, Get, to the yeah. question. Get to the question. Get to the question. Okay. So, um, okay. So when I see the children and the elderly with these mouth and nose coverings, mm-hmm. better known as whatever, right? I get truly <laughs> disturbed. Like yeah. it really disturbs me. Uh, meaning, I know I'm being affected and mentally and emotionally, and I'm not sure, like sometimes, how to handle that. So, you know, the sentiment that I have. So, what would be? I mean, you probably already mentioned them, but maybe with these questions, you can you know, dig a little deeper. What can I do about that? You gave me the breath. I got that. Yes. Okay. I. So here's what I urge everyone to do. And we approach everything in Western culture um, from a pathogenic model, right? We see everything as, in other words, the glass half empty. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We look at everything from the perspective of there's something wrong. I need to fix it. Right. So from our medical care system to our mental health Mm -hmm. system to our education, something's wrong with that kid. He can't learn like all the other kids in the room. There's something wrong. We need to either fix him or get him out of here. Mm -hmm. Um, To our parenting. Right. Sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, if we have multiple children, it's, you know, that kid, the one that is causing the issue or, or being a disturbance, that's the one that we focus on. So everything in Western culture we focus on from that perspective. In indigenous culture and other cultures, we look at things from what is termed a salutogenic perspective, mm-hmm. which is more of the cup is half full. Mm. So we don't, we look at everyone as perfect and whole and how can I help you build on your perfection? Mm. You know, how do I help you build, (laughs) you know, on who you are? Like, you know, you talk a lot about trauma in your personal situation, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) And so to look at you, you say, oh, she's gorgeous. She's wonderful. Look at how she has been able to be resilient. Look Mm. where she is. Look who she is. Look how she is as a mother. 
right? Mm -hmm. That's your <laughs> resilience. You're perfect. Yeah. So if there are behaviors you want to change, then we say, okay, how do That's, we build on what she has mm -hmm. in order to help her change those behaviors? Mm -hmm. We have to learn to look at everything in the salutogenic model. So even when we see mm. the elderly yeah. or we see the child and they have a mask on, it may not be optimal, right? Yeah. It may not be what the optimal thing is, but they're resilient. It's going to be okay. We're mm. going to move past that. There, okay. we're going to be, there's going to be a time where the mask comes off. This isn't going to last forever. The mask is going to come off, and then we're going to go on with life, and then we're going to okay. go and do the other things. That's or good. we're going to learn how to give and, and, and receive whatever it is we need to give and receive by seeing somebody's face without the mask on. We'll learn to manage that even going through this time. So we have to look at things not like everything is tragic and everything yeah, is so terrible and everything is such a problem and shift to it is what it is. Mm -hmm. In order to have an, oh, this is one of my oh, favorite on. things uh -oh. to say. Uh -oh. Yeah, let me, I got to, you know. Uh -oh. Okay. No, you know, <laughs> one of my favorite things to say is if you want to have emotional and, and mental well-being and overall wellness, Sometimes you have to have harmony with the way life is. Mm. This is the way life is. <laughs> See. If you don't have harmony and find a way to have harmony Ooh. with the way life is, you will not experience wellness because you are fighting against mm. something that you cannot beat at this point in time. Sure. Woo. Sure. So it's not that we don't. Um, strive for excellence, strive for the best. Wow. But sometimes we do have to to um, be okay with the way things are. Awesome. Drop we'll be mic. right back after these very important messages. Thanks so much for listening to Money Radio 1510 105.3 FM. And give us a call. Again, this show is for you. Give us a call anytime, listeners, 602-324-1510. You can also catch us on Facebook Live. Hi, it's Michael, and welcome back to another Vitamin Magic Carpet Ride. We left off talking about the deficiencies of biotin. And I said loss of hair all over the body, thinning hair, uh, getting red rashes around the eyes, nose, mouth. Those are all indications that biotin is not at a good, healthy level in your system. Conjunctivitis is another issue. And in talking about conjunctivitis, one of the things that you can do is make a tea out of golden seal root and use that as an eye wash. It's fabulous and it will get rid of conjunctivitis because it's just the a bacteria in the eye and golden seal root is fabulous for killing bacteria. Other signs of a biotin deficiency are seizures, skin infections, brittle nails. Also with nails, I think I mentioned this once before, if you see ridges on your nails, that tells you that your body is having a hard time assimilating protein, which indicates that you may need more B vitamins to make the digestive enzymes, also more panathenic acid. And what that also tells me when I see that with the client is that they're under stress. And again, panathenic acid is essential for the adrenal glands, which are what deal with the stress that you're dealing with. Also being lethargic. And you know that feeling sometimes when circulation is cut off where you get the pins and needles, that too can be a biotin deficiency. And of course, developmental delay in babies and infants, a problem. This is why moms need to be well-nourished. Children at any age, every age, need to have supplementation coming into their body to keep, to get them and keep them. Thanks so much, Michael, for that great information about vitamins. So our very special guest today has been Ia Afo, founder of Heal Historical Trauma here in the Phoenix area. And we've been discussing various aspects of our mental and emotional well-being and how they can negatively affect our overall health and our ability to, uh, to cope with life's many challenges. So do you have any closing comments or advice for our listeners in the 60 seconds that we have left? 
Yes, I, I, so I think that when we look at overall wellness, we need to think of wellness as balance. We need to think of it as many different aspects of our life, physical, emotional, psychological, um, economic yeah. harmony, um, spirituality, relationships with family, relationship within the community. All of those things contribute to our overall wellness. And when we want to think about the mental and emotional component, we have to think about how do I impact the neuromodulators in my brain that is going to help me feel better, feel motivated, feel full, feel satisfied with life. And we can do that through breathing. We want to have um, a few moments a day that we, we take to have silence and mm -hmm. combine that with the gratitude practice. And that helps to increase the neuromodulators That's awesome. and helps us to feel better. I appreciate that. Please visit her company website at HealHistoricalTrauma.com. Her phone number is 480-207-9778. I'm Elizabeth Joseph, your guest host today, sitting in for Kenyatta Turner with my co-host, Stephanie Stanley with Pharmacists Yay. for Humanity. Yes. <laughs> be sure to tune in next week when our topic will be acupuncture versus acupressure, oh, wow. which my, with my friend, our very special guest, Benjamin Lewis, a licensed acupuncturist at Ma Wellness Center and Modern Acupuncture in the East Valley. If you missed any part of the show today, you just want to listen again. All shows can be heard on demand anytime at the website healthygrocerradio.com or on moneyradio1510.com you can also watch and listen to the show live at facebook.com backslash the healthy grocer radio show click on the link for this week's live show until then next saturday at 11 thanks for listening to the healthy grocer radio show and remember health is your greatest wealth <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you thanks Visit AwakeningMusicBooks.com for avant-garde artists, eclectic world music, consciousness raising radio and blogs, self-help healing and wellness services. That's AwakeningMusicBooks.com.